In this video tutorial, we will build the schedule that you see on your screen. This is the resource view of MindFusion JavaScript Scheduler. We have the departments of a company to the left and three timelines at the top for the month, the current day, and the hour. Note that the background of cells during work hours is different. There is no workday coloring for calendar cells that are on weekends. We create an empty folder and copy there the scheduling.js file and a directory with the themes. You can get the scheduler file and the themes from the download archive that is available through MindFusion's website. We create an empty web page and save it in the directory of our project. Its name is Resource View. We add a reference to the business CSS file, which represents the business theme. At the end of the web page, just before the closing body tag, we add a reference to the scheduling JS file. We also reference another JavaScript file called resource view. This will be our code behind file, which will contain the programming for our application. We add a div element that contains a canvas. It is very important that we give this canvas an ID. The canvas will render the calendar and we need to be able to refer to it from code. We add a namespace mapping for the MindFusion. Scheduling namespace and create the calendar object using the DOM element of the canvas, which we get by its ID. We also set the current view of the calendar to resource view. The theme is business. We need to set its name now. We also call the render method and open the web file in a browser. Here is our scheduler. It does not have any rows yet because we haven't added any resources that will be the headers for these rows. First, let us change the formatting of the timelines. We want all three timelines to remain the bottom, top, and middle one. We use the Resource View Settings field to specify the time unit for each of timelines, month, day, and hour. We use the Format property to specify the format of the rendered time. The format strings are standard JavaScript formatting strings for date and time. We add now a list with all departments, which are instances of the location class, which is ideal fit for what we want to achieve. We add each instance to the locations list of the calendar schedule. Now we set the group type property of the calendar to group by locations. And here's the resource grid. What we need now are some styling. 
We can easily inspect the styles that are used by this view with the Inspector tool of the browser. We add the styling classes to the web page. Note that many CSS classes, used by the scheduler theme, are initialized with its name. That's how you need to use them as well. Now the resource table looks much better. When we create new items and you see that the item height could be bigger. We use the Item Settings field to set the size of items to 33. We also add a list with employees to the Contacts collection of the schedule. They are instances of the Contact class. We use now the Cells property of the calendar, which gives us all cell instances. Each cell is of type View Cell, and we can check the class members in the online documentation. It has Start and End Time properties, which we will use, as well as BG Cell field, that gives us reference to the DOM element that represents that cell. We will use it as well. So, we cycle through all cells of the calendar and check if the day of the week for this cell is on Sunday or Saturday. If not, we get those, which are between 9 and 18 o'clock, and use the BG cell field to paint them with a semi-transparent background. Let's refresh the scheduler. The background is now visible. If we create new items, their size is now bigger. When we create an appointment, we can choose among the available employees, which appear as contacts. And that's the end of this video tutorial. In the next one, we will expand the features of our application with filtering of the contacts according to department and restrictions on the creating and modifying of items. The source code is available for download from a link that is listed in the video description. Thank you for watching and thank you for your interest in MindFusion Developer Tools.